Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world. This is Howie, and I'm here to help you win with money. In today's episode of my year-end options trading summary, this is week number 52. The last trading day of the year is yesterday. So I have all the data. I popped it into my spreadsheet. I'm going to share that with you in this video. So stay tuned. See what I did. See what I learned. And see what I'm going to do different for next year. So what does it mean when I did this 234? I was doing an iron condor on SPY all year long. I created... Whenever I did my trades, I didn't like to co-mingle my trades. So I used lots, different lot numbers. A lot of two contracts, three contracts, four contracts. If you add all that up, that's nine contract max. My iron condors were structured in a way where they were 10 wide between the short and the long leg. So if you do the math, that's nine contract times a thousand buying power equal 9,000 max, I could never have more than a 2, a 3, and a 4 open at any given time. And the last rule that I did was I closed all my positions yesterday, so it's really easy to calculate the ROI. If I left the positions open, it would skew the data a little bit higher. So what did I end up doing? When I put everything on the spreadsheet, I was able to see that I made about 190 trades. My PL for the year on this particular trade was $4,300. And my max buying power, again, is 9000 So my ROI for the year was 48%. I'm not complaining. Whenever you can make 48% return on $9,000 in a market where most people lost 20% on the S&P 500. Now, there's some, here's the most interesting part of this. If you look at the, my, total, my total summary of all my trades, not just the 234, I made 1,555 trades. A lot of them were other trades that I do. Some of them were cover calls. Some of them were credit spread. CSPs in there. There was Iron Condor. But the most interesting part of this was the 234s were only 12% of the total volume. This 190 is only 12% of this number of trades. But this profit is 21% of the total trade, which means this particular portfolio, this type of trade, carried its weight. It did really well. And all my other strategies actually did worse. And that's what it's telling me. So let's go look at some Excel spreadsheets. I corrupted my data, and the good thing was I saved these files to the cloud, and I have different uh, version history, and I wrote back to maybe a, a copy that was about 20 copies old, and that one had the working data. This week, I made $185, and let's go over here. It says I made... 1,551 trades. That's my running PL over here. This is, and then this data is all pivot table. And you can see I have, this is all pivot table, so it's driven by what trades you have. The interesting thing that you should notice is there's one month where I lost money. And then the other thing that's interesting is if when you break it out, I can see the trend. Cover calls were not doing so well in the beginning of the year when the market was flat or near the peak. And then the cover calls did really well towards the end of the year when the market has been downtrending. Cover calls means none of your calls are going to get assigned early or you're not going to tap out the max, you know, you limit your upside. All the premium go in your pocket and you keep on writing new ones. So I made money on cover calls. This year, I made 19000 600 because if you track this number from this number the dividend that's how much i made so it's 19,000 and change but i did notice that i lost money on some other trades that didn't do so well so let's go and look at the 234 
So I go back to my raw data table, put a filter on 234. So these are all the trades that I have for 234 on week number 52. And if you just do this, you will see that I lost money on this week, $611. Now you can see why I closed them. This one had 49 days left, 77, 28. The challenge is I opened a new one here and I opened a new one here. So last week, and I opened a new one here. And so that could have hurt me because when you open it and you didn't give it enough time to do its thing and the market moves against you and I'm forced to close it because I didn't want to make it really hard to calculate the ROI. So now if you just do this, this will show you every cover, I mean, every 234 trade I had since the beginning of the year. And you'll see that over here and I have it all here. And this subtotal should work because it's a formula and we'll double check that by just doing this. And the numbers do tie 48, I think it was 48% return, but it was pretty good. And let's just take a quick look at a few trades in week number 52 that I think you will find maybe interesting, maybe not. Let's look at maybe AMD. So AMD, you see, I've been rolling this down. So I rolled down earlier in the week on the 27th. Then I rolled down again. So let me show you how much I made. The first time I rolled down, you made $9. The second time I rolled down, another $5.50. And then, because it was moving in my direction, you see how it only cost me a dollar to close this position and then move it to next week. And I collected $26 and change. So for the week, one particular row is $41 on AMD. So for EA, made 23 bucks, same thing, I rolled down, then I rolled out, then last week I did it. Now, you see how this will wash? So it's not gonna ruin my data. So if you look at EA for the last three weeks, $100 on EA, I only have 100 shares, it's worth Right now, you can see it's worth about a hundred and uh, twelve thousand dollars. So I made a so in the last three weeks, you made a hundred dollars just in cover call. And you see, I can repeat that over and over. Remember how the colors are different weeks? Let's look for another trade. I put a filter on Visa, and I put a filter on the Iron Condor. So you can see, I've been testing Visa out. And Visa, let me see if this is for the whole year. Oh, I don't want to go back too far. That's that's too long. Let me let me just look at this filter is for all of them. So I'm gonna go back to trade. Here we are, right here. So this is Visa. So this year from doing iron condors on Visa, I made two thousand three hundred. The most I ever had was four contracts open at any given point. Sometimes I went back down to three, sometimes I went back to a two, I believe. $2,000 on these iron condors. So this year, my iron condors is pretty good. So that showed you the data of what I did in the year-end options trading. Like I said, I thought it was pretty interesting that cover calls were making money, but they took a lot of trades. Really, they made, they made less money per trade on average than my iron condors. And again, this this particular SPY one did really well. So there's some interesting things that I learned from this data. So here's my final takeaway. That this, this was more of a public portfolio. Whenever I did my trades at time of opening, I posted a lot of these trades on Investing 102, and most of them were also posted on Options Trading 101. These are Facebook groups. I'm posting my trades at open, not at close, at open or when I roll. Remember, rolling consists of a close and an open at the same time. So other traders can see my moves before I know what happens to them. Cover calls were easy premium to make, but per trade I made less. But what's really surprising is I had other things that I don't talk about every day, even though I, I posted my trades, like my Visa ones, my QQQs, and a lot of them actually didn't, I mean, they made profit, but they really underperformed. So I found it really interesting. There was a, I had about three or four bad trades, 
I'm talking about losses in like a thousand, two thousand, and I don't remember what my biggest loss was for the year. One of the things that I have learned is you gotta learn to take your losses early and quick. Don't wait for the pain to happen. You see, because I'm going ten wide, max loss is a thousand dollars, and if you multiply that by the number of contract, it can get really uh, heavy or big. For me, experiencing fifty, sixty, or seventy percent of the max loss is a lot. I need to exit out way before it gets to, let's say, 25, 30% of the max loss. Because if you can spot it early and get out of that trade, at least you cap it and you start all over again. The last thing that you learn is option is awesome for using for hedging. This year proves that when the markets were mostly down all year, the option strategy was consistent in producing income or producing premiums. I'm using as a hedge. I said this before. Your 401k plan is 100% long position. Whether you got a thousand bucks in there or a hundred thousand dollars, you're long. But there's nothing you can do. If you had a hundred thousand dollars in a 401k plan and the market is down 20%, on average, your 401k plan is probably worth 80 grand right now. So your position just lost 20%. In conjunction with your 401k plan, sure, you could have still lost that 20%. But if your options portfolio was trying to make money in flat markets or, or in other markets, right? The, if you're trying to make a little bit of money every week, like what I try to do, the gains can offset the losses. Now, it won't be a one-for-one -one offset, right? A lot depends on how much cash you have. For me, my options trading portfolio is really a small subset of my total portfolio. So that's one of the things I want to adjust. I want to actually move more money into my options portfolio. So in the future, it acts as a better hedge. Will it ever be one for one? I don't think it will be. In any case, that brings this video to an end. If you like what you see, if you have any questions, please comment below. Hey, if you haven't already saw my other videos, go and look at my 2022 year-end summary. I go through how much money I am cash flowing into new investment for the year 2022. If you haven't seen the travel hack one, that summarizes all the things that I did using credit card points and airline miles and what happened. I have some photos of some of my uh, trips and hotels. And then the last one is check out what I'm going to do for the next year. For 2023, what challenge do I have coming up? So please watch those videos. As always, subscribe, comment, give me a like. Don't forget, let's do this together. Let's do this $1 at a time and have a profitable day. Bye-bye.